Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. I have a guest with me for the first time on the podcast, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen Podcast, number 36. I have a guest, Chris Matthews. So, hello, Chris. Hey, Shannon. How's it going? <laughs> Glad to be on your show. The first guest ever. Can I call myself God Chris? Yes, I'll be Goddess Kring and you'll be I God don't Chris. Know that works. <laughs> well, we'll. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if it, it fits at the end of the show. <laughs> we don't have a god and goddess fight here. Yes. So tell me something about, I know you've written a play that I'm part of. I guess we'll talk about the play and share anything you want about your your theater. You're a theater guy. I am. And <laughs> gosh, I didn't plan on talking about this, but w- let's do it anyway. Because I'm here and I don't know what else to talk about. Um, yeah, I have... Um, a fascination with a TV show called Twin Peaks that it's a pretty big hit about 20 some years ago so it's back on the TV now um, after 25 years of not being on TV I wrote three uh, sequels that were mainly meant to be done as just stage readings for the Twin Peaks festival um, back in the days when nobody thought we'd ever see any new episodes we read them actually a couple of times, and I staged them in 94, no, 95, 96, and 98. And then a couple of years back, I realized it was coming on about 20 years um, anniversary, and I thought, what the heck, let's, let's put them up on stage again, you know, a few times for people who have never seen them. And then uh, shortly after that, it was announced the TV show was coming back, so I thought, okay, that's timing, let's do it. So this one we're going to be doing is the third in the uh, trilogy, the finale. It's the biggest one. It involves 20, maybe about 22 actors in it. Um, Shannon is one of them. I um, knew of her from a long time ago uh, when she did her uh, TV show on um, public access and befriended her on Facebook and thought she would be an interesting person to at least come in and audition for me and it worked out and she's playing a couple roles for me in it um <clears throat> one is a commercial and i'm probably gonna try to get her to do the commercial later she should practice it anyway if she doesn't want to do it she doesn't have to i'll do it <laughs> okay it's very short and um the other one she's playing um audrey horn on the show uh very final season the finale sorry if this is a spoiler but she was involved in an explosion at the savings and loan, and nobody knew what happened to Audrey. So in my sequel, Audrey is coming back. But because she got blown up in an explosion, she is now wrapped in bandages and speaks through a voice box and is pushed around in a wheelchair. <laughs> so, you know, the, the once vital and beautiful Audrey is now, well, on the road to recovery, I guess. I'm kind of excited that I get to play a role like wrapped in bandages in a wheelchair because I'm used to like being naked all the time. And so this will be like the opposite. I'll be completely covered up. That's right. (laughs) She's alive. (laughs) Wrapped in bandages. (laughs) Anyway, so um, it's uh, we're we're opening the show in almost exactly three weeks. Uh, It'll play for two weekends at West of Lennon in Fremont. Um, July 7th, 8th, 14th and 15th at 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the afternoon on the 9th and the 16th. So, uh, come on down. I think we'll have room for you. It's a lovely theater. It holds about 88 people. So it's still fairly intimate. Um, it's fun. We've got, uh, some extras. We've got some musical uh guests coming out we got a burlesque dancer one night so we're doing the sequel um episode that i wrote some mock commercials and uh it's kind of wild and wacky and it's but it's a lot of fun it's got a uh, scares and and romance and uh i i think everybody will enjoy it and uh shannon's part of it but there are like i say 20 or more people wonderful wonderful actors and i think the script is really strong and I'm happy to be part of it. And is there like a Facebook, there's a Facebook event page, I guess, for you it? Or... An event page. You look That's up cool. uh, Twin Peaks Live 3. And um, I try to post something new every day. We had uh, a photo shoot 
last Sunday with some of our main actors. Um, they went to the, I don't know what people call it, the, the Bruce Lee Cemetery, because he and Brandon Lee are buried there, but it's up on... Oh, yeah, Lake, I think Park. Lakeview. Yeah, Lakeview Lake Cemetery. Yeah, everyone thinks Jimi Hendrix is there, but no, wow. it's Bruce Lee. <laughs> Wander around in a purple haze looking for Jimi. Yeah. He's in Renton, you silly fools. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because the, the, the climactic scene in this is a, a wedding that takes place in a cemetery. They thought it would be fun to go take pictures in an actual cemetery. So Cool. Okay. Let's see. And now here's kind of a clip from the show. Do you want to set this up, Chris? Oh, I do so much. Um, this is a lovely uh, piece we've got that is, it's, it's a voiceover from a nice local actress who's fairly well known called Dolores Rogers. She, I have never met her. It's kind of one of those things like, yeah, I met her and talked to her and sent her a copy of this uh, scene and said, would you like to read this? It's uh, a character... Uh, named Nadine Hurley, who, if you've seen the show, she's a very unique character. Um, she's in a marriage with a guy that she should be with, really. And she... Basically, somebody... I asked somebody what they wanted to see on the show, you know, in the like a fantasy scene that, that I had not written or they had never seen. And I said, what would you like to see? And they said, kill Nadine. And I said, no, 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 that's horrible. I'm not going to kill anybody. That's that She just needs to get out of that marriage. So I wrote this scene. Where she's reading a letter that she's left for her husband that she's leaving. So it's it's like she's moving on and letting him move on and be with the woman he's supposed to be with. And I probably said too much now. Now you don't have to listen to it. But well. anyway, <laughs> uh, you have to come see the show. But if you've seen it, Dolores just nails the Nadine part. She could be her. Yeah, I, I saw the clip. I listened to the actress, and then I saw the clip that you showed me, and the voice was almost exact, and she's got a very interesting voice. So I'm going to play the clip for you now. Dear Eddie, sorry I won't be there for Lucy and Andy's big day, but I just couldn't bear it. A painfully nagging reminder of the farce our own marriage has become. And maybe always has been. I do love you and at the same time hate you for wasting both of our lives when we could have found happiness with someone else. You with Norma. Me with, well, whoever. Because of Lucy's condition, I suppose she and Andy felt it was the right thing to do. I hope they do truly love each other. We didn't have the bun in the oven excuse. And I guess our never conceiving should have been some kind of sign that things weren't proper. But some couples shift all their attention to the baby when it arrives. And if they're in a healthy relationship, it strengthens their bond. In a loveless marriage, family values are no bargain. So better late than never, huh? Maybe you and Norma will be lucky enough to finally have a little Ed. Or Edwina or whatever. Anyway, good luck. I have a lot of healing to do. I don't know if I'll ever be able to live down how I carried on with that poor Mike Nelson boy when I was in that regrettably altered mental and physical state. And don't worry, I won't be taking too many pills again. Maybe one or two to help me sleep. But Dr. Jacoby is weaning me off of those. I need to stay away from them and from men, at least for the time being. I'll be residing at Margaret's indefinitely. Don't refer to her as the log lady. She has a lot of wisdom, warmth, and space. Even enough for my temper and inventions. She has this fantastic scorched oil that works great with my silent drapery runners. Sarah Palmer is staying there as well. And even that rich bitch Sylvia Horn stayed a weekend. I'm sorry, I shouldn't call her that. She's really very nice and very beautiful once she lets her hair down. I'll be filing the divorce papers tomorrow and will have a copy sent to you if you need to reach me. I'll be here at the log cabin. It's okay to call the house that. Don't feel bad for me, Ed. Feel good for you. Give my best to Andy and Lucy. And the gift I picked out, too. Give your best to Norma. If she makes you happy, how can I hate her? My heart is broken. But I know there are ways to fix it. Be happy, you big bastard. Regards, your soon-to-be ex-wife. Nadine. P.S. I'm going to Seattle to check into that 
getting that artificial eye and would like you to pay for it. Like you offered. Thanks. So you just heard a clip from Twin Peaks Live Episode 3, and that was a scene called Nadine's Eye is Finally Open. And this is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, podcast number 36. And I have a special guest, Chris Matthews, the writer of the play that I'm part of. And we have another special guest, and I'll let Chris introduce the guest or talk about the guest. Hi, my special guest, and you can't see the special guest, but it's it's a piece of wood. It's a log that was actually signed by Catherine Coulson, who was the character, the log lady, Margaret Lanternman on the show. Now, that said, uh, I won this as part of a, a costume contest prize a few years ago at the Twin Peaks Festival. Um, I met Catherine several times over the years. Very wonderful lady. Um, the last time I did see her, she had come to the festival shortly after they announced the new season was coming out. Um, just started about a month ago. <clears throat> and she came to the festival to be with her fans and, and uh, people that love Twin Peaks. And she looked a little tired, but nobody knew that she was really sick. And a few months later, it was revealed that um, she actually had cancer and, and passed away. But it was very nice to be able to get to see her one final time. And I had her autograph um, cover of a little film I made with my friend Matt Leventhal called Flappy, Behind the Music in the Air. It was narrated by the log because she kept talking about her log is going to have something to say about this one of these days. And I revealed that the log actually spoke and was actually a trained um, thespian. He, uh, well, truthfully, I did the log voice myself. And uh, the, the, the short is a mockumentary about the bird from the very opening sequence. And his name is Flappy. And the log's name is Thaddeus Stumpy Joe McGinnis. And he sounds kind of like this. He's very, very well read. He's, he's a classy guy. And he, he knew Flappy not very well, but, you know, well enough to be able to speak about him. And um, so she actually had seen the film that I had given her. And um, last thing she said to me was, oh, I saw this. It was very funny. And signed it and gave it back to me. So, and, and one of the things we're doing in the play, um, we, we do a series of mock commercials. And Shannon will tell you about one later that she's actually doing. But this one features the log lady and the, um, the inimitable Captain Kirk from Star Trek. Um, there's an actual talking log <laughs> toy that you can buy yourself at stores. It has a pull string like the old days. And uh, it's, it's kind of silly and funny. But he has a different voice. He's a, more of a cartoony uh, log. He would say things like, Fire! Don't walk with me! <laughs> and uh, I want to boldly go where no log has ever gone before. So... Obviously, Captain Kirk is there because there's a different version called Captain's Log. Anyway, um, yeah, that's about it. I'm beating this thing to death with a log. Um, anyway, uh, uh, show up and, and you can see. I may even bring the sign log. You can see that in person. Don't touch it, though. <laughs> um, it's one of my prized possessions. It'll be in a pine glass, you know, like so people can just ogle at it and... and Love it, but not actually be able to touch it. Don't touch my log. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And now maybe I'll read some of the commercial that I'm going to do because yeah. I need to practice my lines. Everybody doesn't like something, but nobody doesn't like Cheryl Lee. Cheryl Lee Cheesecake, available frozen, wrapped in plastic, in the diary, I mean, dairy case. So good, it's almost sinful. Okay, there he is. okay so uh, it's Chris again. Um, I just say I had a rehearsal last night. Um, really good. I have a guy that um, came in that I worked with a few times. It's a very fine actor named Julian Garcia. Uh, Shannon has not met Julian. Julian play, or he plays a couple of parts in the show. He plays Jack Wheeler, who is Audrey Horn's boyfriend. 
Shannon hasn't met him yet. <laughs> so he kind of takes care of her in the show. He's a very nice, um, handsome man. Uh, he just had a, a baby. Well, he didn't have a baby. His his girlfriend had a baby. But uh, he's a new father. Uh, and he, play, he, play, he actually played Agent Cooper in the last episode we did. This time he comes back at the very end. We have another guy playing Cooper, a guy named Chris Chambers, who uh, does an excellent job with it. Uh, he comes on at the very end as an FBI agent that uh, kind of came on TV after Twin Peaks was on, a guy named Fox Mulder. And uh, the star of the X-Files, for those of you who are going, I've heard that name before. Not an actual Fox, but... So he comes on and meets Agent Cooper at the end. and uh, So that's kind of cool. We got a, a, a large selection of people that are very interesting. Some some really um, handsome and lovely people that you want to come and see. But they're also really good actors. They're not there. You're going to come and just ogle them and think, wow, I wonder if he's got a girlfriend. <laughs> well, he's got a wife. He's got a baby. <laughs> Anyway, so um, Shannon, want to talk a little more about the talk about when we're doing this show and where we're doing it, so people can come out and see us. Yeah, I'd actually never heard before I auditioned for you. I'd never heard of the left of left of Lenin West Theater. A oh, West, oh, not West, left of Lenin, West of Lenin, going okay. towards Ballard. So it's called West of Lenin Theater, and it's in Fremont. And I'm happy and excited to be part of this play. And the dates again, what are the dates again? We run two weekends, July 7th through the 9th and the 14th through the 16th. Um, the two Friday and Saturdays are 8 o'clock shows, 4 o'clock matinees on the Sundays. Um, yeah, so it's a couple hours. And then again, uh, if they want to find it on Facebook, what would they say? Just Twin uh, Peaks Live 3. We have a Facebook page. I try to post something new every day. Cool. So um, Twin Peaks Live on through and, Facebook. And, uh, join in, you know, converse with us. If you like the show or you have questions about it, we'll answer them. And hope to see you down there at the show um, in July. Thanks a lot, Chris. It was nice You're to welcome. have you. My first guest. I did Yay, it. Yay, I feel like a Yay. god, but not quite. <laughs> it's just funny that when I have a guest on, I just feel much more shy and introverted. And then when I'm by myself, I'm just not afraid to say anything into the microphone that's just kind of weird that my personality does that well i think you can do fine with some guests i'm i'm yes i feel honored that i got to do the the guest um first guest appearance yeah i think i will explore the idea of more guests so hey if you're listening and you want to be a guest on my show let me know just go to shannonkringa.com and email me with questions or comments or show ideas and maybe i'll have you on and interview you or talk to you let me know yeah, it's fun. Just watch out for the cat. Yeah, watch the out. Cat, the cat <laughs> likes a little bit of playing, but then he just will grab your hand. He didn't do me, but I almost kitty. Yes, I have a, a, a big orange fluffy cat named Kisun. That's Russian for kitty, and I adopted him from this Russian lady, and I think he's kind of a, a strong Russian kind of cat. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be rushing to get your hand. <laughs> yeah. Watch out for them claws. I think Bring him I, some nice raw meat. He likes that. Ever since I've switched him to the raw meat, I think he's a little bit more macho and a little bit there more like are. a lion now. <laughs> You're listening to Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. This is Goddess Kring, podcast number 36. And my first guest, Chris Matthews, has another project he wants to share about. Yeah, this is a group that I've been involved with for the last eight or nine years uh, called Midnight Mystery Theater. Um, we're a radio-style comedy troupe. Um, we're not on the radio, but we do things like they would do in the old radio days. Live uh, actors reading many different parts, script in hand, uh, live sound effects and audience participation. It's very fun. Uh, very broad characters, um, and we've been doing it for quite a while. We've just started doing it at a new venue called the Conservatory in Georgetown. It's the heart of Georgetown there on Airport Way. Um, we just did a show there about a week ago. We got our second show coming up the um, 13th of July, so it's sort of in the middle of the Twin Peaks Live run. But that Thursday night at 7.30... It's a free show, so you don't have to worry about buying tickets. Uh, come on down, have a cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever, and enjoy the crazy comedy stylings of Midnight Mystery Theater. 7.30, not midnight. 
And that's at the conservatory or where's that? Conservatory in Georgetown. Yes. Cool. That's a cool place. I, I did some modeling there once for a, um, an art thing and they have like painting classes and it's a coffee shop and they have theater and music. And I think they had an open mic thing once that I went to and did a little poetry and the conservatory is a pretty cool place in Georgetown. They do everything except <laughs> human sacrifice. But yeah. <laughs> you're an artist. You're always sacrificing something. <laughs> So maybe a little bit of that, but nobody's going to die or get hurt. It's true. They really do have interesting um, lighting there. And I think they have like a skull, like a chrome skull and like a big chair that looks like it's from the 15, oh, yeah. 1500s, like the Shakespearean throne. looking chair. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so Come say, to the conservatory. Yeah. So it's what, July? What July did you say? July the 13th. July 13th. Thursday. <laughs> okay. In fact, it's... Uh... <laughs> month from the day exactly four weeks cool okay well thanks for sharing that you're welcome so tell me about the interactive singing competition that you're part of okay you twisted my <laughs> arm um recently i've just gotten involved in so many things it's like everything at once happening um i am first year they've done it for about four years uh a, a little thing called the seattle karaoke league um, we get together this year. It's at the Blarney Stone, uh, First Avenue, um, downtown, across from the market, right there by the show box. You can find it. And we, Monday nights, starting ideally about 7.30, uh, we have seven teams right now who compete. Friendly competition. We do three songs a night. And, um... Have a great time. There's a mystery round. There's a group sing, and um, then there's a theme night. Um, last week's theme was shapes or something. <laughs> it was kind of weird. Like, okay, you got to pick something that has shapes in the title. And this week is a uh, um, taste the rainbow. It's called. So it's you have to do something by openly gay artist. So it's kind of a big pride um, pre pride. I don't know. The Pride thing is lasting weeks this year, isn't it? It's not just a weekend. Yeah, it seems like it's. I already see lots of Pride things around. Yeah. yeah. It's Pride Month, apparently, now. it's mm -hmm. It's gotten so big, we, we can't just contain it with a weekend. It's got to be the entire month of June. <laughs> anyway, um, so, yeah, it's you're open to come and watch us perform and cheer us on. We don't have open things where you can come and sing. But the, uh, D, the KJ, her name is KJ Rio Ventura. Uh, actually has a regular gig there on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And you can come and sing with her those nights. But Monday, particularly this Monday, we're encouraging people to come out and enjoy the the free entertainment. It's um, you never know what you're going to see. You're going to see a bunch of crazy people up there doing um, not just singing, but uh, trying to incorporate costumes and props and choreography and doing very interesting and different things taking chances and where is that again it's at the blarney stone it's on first uh, between union and pike um across from the market uh, just almost right directly next to the show box oh, okay i've never actually been yeah, there that's or, cool or just 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 north of seattle art museum okay check it out come on down <sighs> So this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, Hollow Earth Radio Seattle, podcast number 36. Thanks again to Chris Matthews, my first guest ever on my show. And again, if you want to find more out about the play that I am part of that Chris Matthews wrote, just uh, search on Facebook Twin Peaks Live Episode 3. And you'll find the event page on Facebook. And again, it's at the West of Lennon Theater. We're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, six performances live on stage. Um, July 7th, 8th, 14th, and 15th. That's Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. And then July, uh, July, whoops, sorry. <laughs> I messed up. July 7th, 8th, 14th, and 15th at 8 p.m., that's a Friday, Saturday, two weekends in a row. And then July 9th and 16th at 4 p.m. Those are two Sundays, two weekends in a row. So check it out on Facebook. And it's at the West of Lennon Theater 
in Fremont, which is 203 North 36th Street. And I'm happy that I am part of that play. I get to play the part of Audrey uh, in a wheelchair with bandages. And I get to also be a naked person wrapped in cellophane plastic and make some jokes about Cheryl Lee, Sarah Lee, cheesecake. Actually, I think I'll say my line again right now. Everybody doesn't like something, but nobody doesn't like Cheryl Lee. Cheryl Lee Cheesecake, available frozen, wrapped in plastic, in the diary, uh, I mean dairy case. So good, it's almost sinful. And then I'm going to seductively bite into some cheesecake. And my costume is nude with plastic wrapped around me. But in reality, I will probably wear flesh-colored bra and panties, barefoot, with plastic wrapped all over me and have my nice hair all fluffy. And then my other character that I get to play, and that's like a little TV commercial skit, and I guess there's going to be three or four different commercial comedy type commercial type little things in the middle of, there's going to be act one and then some comedy commercials and then act two. And I get to play Audrey in act two in a wedding scene where I will be in a wheelchair pushed around by my boyfriend or husband, and I will be wrapped from head to toe in bandages and I get to talk through a voice box, so my voice will be very flat and monotone with no emotion in my voice, very flat. So that's how I'll speak. I'll, I'm gonna come up with a voice that I'm gonna use for that. So thanks, Chris Matthews, for being on my show, Got a Screen Podcast 36. Thank you to Hollow Earth Radio Seattle for having me create this show. And after this show airs on Hollow Earth Radio, it airs every Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It is now June of 2017. And I also archive this once it's aired on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. I archive it on my YouTube channel, which is YouTube Shannon Kringen channel. And I have it on Mixcloud, which I think is under Goddess Kring. See, a lot of my things are, some of them are under Goddess Kring and some of them are under Shannon Kringen. So if you just go to shannonkringen.com, I link everything there. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And so I archive this show on Mixcloud. And the first 23 episodes are on Bandcamp, but I can't get it to upload anymore and I don't know why. So it's mostly on every single episode, actually. All 36 are on Mixcloud and Patreon and YouTube. And actually, I think YouTube is the funnest to listen to because you can watch something visual. When you listen to my podcast on my YouTube channel, it is a visual slideshow of my artwork in various random interesting photos I have taken of myself, of plants, animals, urban decay, different textures and colors and shapes. And so you can be visually entertained if you want to do more than just listen to audio. So thanks for tuning in, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. And now I want to play a monologue that I created about democratic socialism. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Glory, glory, hallelujah. When I lay my burden down, may we all heal and grow and learn. Actually, I kind of like doing that, like singing along to myself. That's interesting. I sang in high school and junior high in choir. I kind of missed that. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Glory, glory, hallelujah. When I lay my burden down. Hey, this is
This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring in Seattle, and I wanted to talk about democratic socialism. Uh, I think a lot of people are in the United States are afraid of democratic socialism or just socialism in general. The word socialism, I think, brings uh, people thoughts of poverty, thoughts of people standing in line like a bread line or, you know, like extreme, extreme socialism, which is similar to communism, which maybe gets a little bit too extreme and then everybody is kind of poor but there's more equality. But the kind of socialism that democratic socialism is actually keeps people at a higher standard of living. I know that right now in the United States of America, we are supposedly a democracy and we have capitalism that is kind of unregulated, meaning that corporations are allowed to basically rip off consumers in terms of price gouging in medicine and rent control is, you know, there's no rent control in a lot of USA cities. And so rent is skyrocketing really, really high and our wages are stagnating. So basically the wages are not going up very much for the average American citizen. So poverty is actually increasing in the United States of America. We are having more poverty under a capitalistic system. Capitalism is very, very competitive way to live. And some people think that capitalism keeps prices low. Maybe in some industries it does in terms of going out and buying clothes and going to the shopping mall and buying certain items. Uh, companies keep the prices low and competitive so that you want to go out and buy their products. You know, that's fine. But other things are very expensive under a capitalistic system. Under capitalism, if the main goal is to make a profit and make money, then things like rent go up and up and up and up. And if you're a wealthy person that makes like $10,000 a month, you can afford to pay $3,000 a month for your mortgage or your rent. But if you're somebody that only makes $1,500 a month, you cannot afford $3,000 a month for rent. So basically you're, you're stuck, if you're a low income person, you're stuck trying to find a place to live that's affordable for you, especially if your wages are not going up, if you make minimum wage. So basically, that's capitalism right now that we have in the United States is that health care is very expensive, rent is very expensive, and yet our wages are not going up. So there's more and more wealthy people and more and more poor people. And the middle class seems to be disappearing. And that's under capitalism. Democratic socialism, if we had more of that in this country, that would help us put more money into things like the public library, public schools, public mass transit, basic infrastructure, rent control, basic affordable rent for people, more money put into infrastructure so that even if you're a low income person, you have basic food and shelter and education and transportation that's affordable. And then if you have time or energy or ambition, you can be an entrepreneur and try to make more money if you're, you know, if you have ambition in that way, but I don't feel like everybody should be forced to work as hard as they possibly can and work 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week just to survive, especially if they're not making a very good wage and their rent is going up. So basically poverty is increasing in the United States of America. Again, because we have rents that are going really high, our healthcare costs are very high and our wages are low. So that, that is not fair. Under a more democratic, socialistic type of a system, we would have more unions. We would have higher wages, basically, for workers, for basic workers. And then the high-income people would have to pay more in taxes. Because right now, the poor and the middle class pay a higher percentage of their income on taxes than the wealthy. And that's the opposite of what it should be. Wealthy people can afford to pay a higher percentage of their income in taxes. And then the taxes would be used for public infrastructure like health care and non-profit health care. Profit capitalism should have no place in health care. So democratic socialism makes it so that we more heavily fund. Not only would we fund health care more, we would spend less because right now our health care medical system is based on profit. So in other words, a, a surgical procedure that costs $50,000 in the United States costs like only about $5,000 in other countries. Or, you know, an example is I know that somebody who used to live in England and now he lives in the United States, he told me that one tetracycline pill 
was 75 cents in England and $10 in the United States. So there's an example of price gouging and capitalism corrupting medicine. If you have to pay $10 per pill for an antibiotic that you need, that's not affordable. And then in England, you're only paying 75 cents per pill. So 10 pills would be $7.50 in England and 10 pills in the United States would be $100. So there's an example of capitalism versus socialism. Democratic socialism in medicine keeps the prices down and prevents corporations from jacking the prices up. So basically the, the standard of living would go up if we had in the United States democratic socialism to help make capitalism more fair and ethical the standard of living for most Americans that are poor and low income and middle class would go up. The standard of living for wealthy people would stay about the same because they would pay more in taxes, but they would still be wealthy and still be able to live the kind of lifestyle that they want with luxury and whatever they choose to live with. But the low income and middle class people and the extremely poor people would have a higher standard of living because their rent would be more affordable, their wages would be higher, and also health care would be non-profit built into taxes so that a rich person, a poor person, a sick person, a healthy person, a young person, and an old person could all go to the doctor and the hospital for a minor checkup or a serious surgical procedure, and none of them would have to worry about a big bill. Even an extremely wealthy person that could afford to pay a big medical bill would also not be charged a large medical bill. So to me, democratic socialism is way more ethical mixed with capitalism than extreme capitalism with a lack of social infrastructure supported. So public libraries are, an, are a perfect example of socialism. You know, libraries are free to the public, whether you're rich, you're poor, you you know, you can be a little kid and go in there and check out library books or videos, and you can be a millionaire and check out library books and videos, and it's all the same. You're equal. So rich people and poor people are considered equal in terms of basic uh, survival, basic food, shelter, clothing, rent, the cost of things, basic infrastructure would be more heavily funded and there would be no more price gouging and no more corruption if we had more democratic socialism and we had more democratic voting system. So public libraries, public schools, public university would be an improvement. I know right now in the United States we have free public education from kindergarten through graduating from high school. And then if somebody wants to, they can pay a lot of money and go to a private school. If their parents can afford it, they can be put into a private school. But then when you go to university and college, you have to usually pay lots and lots and lots of money because it's for a for-profit system where tuition is outrageously expensive. So basically, our healthcare and our education system could be expanded to be more public, like the public library, the public fire department, the public police department. I mean, imagine if you had to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have the firemen come and put your house fire out, or if you had to pay $500, you know, for a police officer to come and help you if you've been the victim of a crime. You know, it's like, no, if you're a victim of a crime, you call the police and they come and they and they try to help you and they write down, you know, a description of what happened to you and they try to figure out how to solve the crime and, and get get you help. And it's free. It doesn't cost tons of money. And yet we pay that, right, with taxes and police officers are paid, you know, to work and to try to help people. Uh, so when they are doing the right thing and helping people, that's a great thing. So basically... Democratic socialism raises the standard of living. It doesn't increase poverty. I think people that are afraid of socialism, again, think that that, that keeps people poor. In my opinion, extreme capitalism with a lack of regulations, like when they say less government, I feel like what they're saying is abandon us you know, to hoard the money, like the government can just hoard the money and embezzle the money and keep the money and then let say it's freedom 
to let the citizens fend for themselves and live in a very competitive world. So I don't want less government. I want different government. I want actually more government, but I want fair, ethical, democratic, socialism style government, not the cutthroat capitalism that we have. So basically, poverty is increasing under a capitalism system. Poverty would decrease under a more democratic socialistic system, meaning we would have basic infrastructure more funded. So basically, I know that it's true. I have friends in Norway and England and Scotland, and I have visited them, and they do have a higher standard of living. You don't have to be wealthy to, to live a comfortable life in these other countries where you don't have to worry about medical bills and rent is kept more reasonable and wages are higher and they have better public mass transit transportation. I'm not sure about the library system in these other countries. I went to London actually and they had a very beautiful library that I visited in London and I did get Wi-Fi there and there was beautiful art on the walls and it looked like they had an amazing collection of books and archival things and I'm not sure if they had videos to check out. I imagine they probably do. I know for a fact that my friend in England, his cell phone, his mobile phone is much cheaper than mine and he gets all kinds of data in unlimited minutes and he pays like um, probably half of what I pay for my mobile phone and he said that's just normal. So in England, basically mobile phones are cheaper than they are in the United States. Also internet, his internet, he pays for high speed internet and he gets extra extra fast internet and he pays less than I do and I just have basic uh, DSL, not, not super high speed, fancy DSL, just regular DSL. So there's an example right there is that in England, my friend doesn't have to worry about medical bills. He can just go to the doctor whenever he wants and a small percentage of his paycheck is taken out every month for national health care and he can go to the doctor and not worry about a big bill. There's no copay. You know, he just pays a little bit in taxes from his paycheck and then he can go to the doctor anytime he wants. There's also very good mass transit in England. I know that gas costs a lot more in England per gallon or per liter. Um, so certain things in Europe are more expensive than they are in the United States. That's true. But from what I've seen, they have a lot better mass transit and they generally have higher wages than we do here in this country. And they basically don't have to worry about medical bills. And my friend's rent is reasonable. So I was just going to say that there are benefits to uh, democratic socialism helps balance out capitalism. Capitalism that is unregulated gets really extreme and competitive. And again, if the wages don't go up along with the rent, then people can't afford to rent or buy houses. So basically poverty seems to be increasing with capitalism here in the United States. So if we had democratic socialism mixed in with our capitalism, especially if we took capitalism out of healthcare and medical care, poverty would actually be reduced. Or basically, if you're a poor, if you're low income or middle class, your life will be less stressful because you will have food, shelter and health care and mass transit that is better and okay and well funded. So if you live in poverty in a more democratic socialistic type system, that's more comfortable than if you live in poverty in an extreme capitalistic system because you don't have the public infrastructure funded and also healthcare is very expensive in this country in U the USA. So price gouging and capitalism should be eliminated from the healthcare system. You know, I'm somebody who wants single payer health care for all rich, poor, young, old, sick, healthy, all covered equally. You know, in England, people are covered equally, whether you're whether you're sick or healthy, you can just go to the doctor and you're not punished if you're sick and rewarded if you're healthy. It's just equality. There's more equality. That's what I was going to say. Democratic socialism helps people have more power that are poor and low income and middle class. 
in the capitalistic system, wealthy people have a lot more power than poor people, and that creates a lot of anger and stress and fear from both rich and poor. Rich people and poor people both are afraid of each other or envy each other or have a, a competition with each other. Whereas if you have basic health care taken care of, then that takes a lot of stress off people that are poor or rich. Because I know that wealthy people also don't want huge medical bills generally. Even if they can afford them, I know that wealthy people generally don't want to pay humongous bills even if they can afford it. So basically, that would also alleviate stress from wealthy people if the health care wasn't a ripoff to the, con you know, be considered a consumer. Like, you know, when I go to a shopping mall and I want to buy clothes or electronic devices, I feel like, okay, I'm a consumer. I'm here to consume and to be a commercial shopper. But when I go to the doctor, I don't want them to think of me as a customer of a doctor. I want them to think of me as a patient, as, a, as an American citizen who requires a public service of health care. So like the public library, healthcare should be public, public education, public transportation, public medical treatment. So I wish that the United States could someday expand the whole public school, public library, public transportation, public police department, expand that idea to public healthcare. So democratic socialism actually helps people become less poor. It alleviates poverty. It helps poverty decrease. Whereas extreme capitalism helps poverty increase. So there's a poem I wrote called In Cast the Outcast, Outcast the Incast. Decrease the corporation, increase cooperation. So when I've been to these different European countries, I can feel it in the air. There's less of a competitive attitude between citizens because everybody knows their health care is okay. Their rent is okay. Rent, food, shelter, public services are more heavily funded in some of these other countries that I've been to. And there's a feeling in the air. It's less stressful. There's longer vacations, longer holidays. Even low-income people take holidays and vacations in Europe. And that's considered norm, a normal part of life to rest and relax and have leisure time and vacation time. Whereas in the United States, it seems like, you know, we work, 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 work. And then if we work really hard, we might be able to save up some money and go on a vacation once a year. Whereas in Europe, it's considered pretty normal to go on one or more vacations or holidays every year. And that's just considered a normal part of life and not a luxury and not a huge expensive luxurious thing that you do if you're lucky enough. So there's a different attitude right there. More democratic socialism helps your lifestyle be more comfortable when you're poor and low income. Also, if you're wealthy, I think it's more comfortable to have this kind of democratic socialism. Of course, you do pay higher percentage of taxes than under an extreme capitalistic system. So those are my thoughts on democratic socialism and poverty and capitalism and wealth. Thank you for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Oh.
So hey, this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, and you're listening to Hollow Earth Radio Seattle, podcast number 36, and I have this keyboard that can sample my voice, and I can make any sound that I want, and then it will play that sound on every key, and that's what you're listening to. So I find it kind of fascinating to play with audio. I sampled my voice again on my keyboard. Shannon Kringen. 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 Shannon Kringen, Kringen, Shannon Kringen, Shannon Kringen, Shannon Kringen, Shannon Kringen, Shannon Kringen, Shannon Kringen, So it's kind of silly to do my voice. I can easily do like a different kind of a sample. Like I could do this, like. Or I could try a totally different sound like Shazazam. Shazazam. So Shazazam. 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 But maybe it sounds better to do like more of a mellow thing. Shazazam. 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 That's funny, isn't it? What's interesting is it does three, it does three different looping. It, it echoes it and then it like repeats it. There's like three different kinds of loops you can do with this.
Really fun to play. Another thing on my keyboard, I just did this one. Ching cling nicity, 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 ching cling, 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 ching And I guess there's one where it actually will echo. Let's see, loop. Yeah, this is where it will echo. So I'm going to have more fun playing with this uh, sampling and echoing thingy that I'm doing. Thanks for listening. So my name is Shannon Kringen. You're listening to Goddess Kring, podcast number 36 on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. And many thanks to Chris Matthews for being my first guest. Again, he's directed and written a play called Twin Peaks Live, Episode 3. And I'm one of the cast members of that. We're going to play it uh, one, two, three, four, six times. We're going to play it live in front of an audience at the West of Lennon Theater in Fremont, 203 North 36th Street, July 7th, 8th, 14th, and 15th, 8 p.m. That's Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and July 9th and 16th at 4 p.m. So thanks for tuning in. I'll close it out with a little music, a little keyboard music, and experimenting actually with two different keyboards and probably going to return one of them, but um, a fan of mine helped me out and got me a keyboard. So long story, but thanks for listening. I'll see you next week. ShannonKringen.com is my website. If you have any questions or comments, I don't get a lot of comments on my show, so I would love questions or comments. And you can email me, ShannonKringen.com, find my email, or just Google Goddess Kring Podcast. I archive these on my YouTube, my Bandcamp, my Patreon, my Mixcloud, etc. They're all over the place. Check it out. <laughs>
I keep saying check it out, sorry. I'm very repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. Everything seems to be a paradox. The harder I try, the harder it gets. The less I try, the easier it gets. So less is more and more is less. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring.